we left off last time uh, having discussed the first part of this sugya, the Mishnah, the Mishnah holds uh, that these things are asur on Yom HaKippurim. Then we ask the question, uh, why does the mission say Asur? Uh, it should say Anush Karet. It should say that he's Chayav Karet. At that moment, when we say that, <clears throat> we haven't yet defined all the things in the Mishnah as actually being Karet. And like I say, if you look at the mission at the beginning of Kritot, it doesn't list all of these inuyim as a chiv kare. It does list achila, and we under and we'll learn out later achila and shtiya are part of. We actually learned it when we learned the Mishnah. Achila and shtiya are both really one isur. They have different shiurim, but they're one isur. So. Um, want us to bear this in mind at this moment that Anush Karet um, should only apply to Achila Shtia. But Yeshum Havamina, there's at that moment when the Gemara asks the question, we might think that there's reason to believe <coughs> that all of these things are Achil Karet. Uh, that's just an introductory comment to keep in mind. So we answered the question. We said, how do we answer the question? What was the basic answer to this question? Why does the Mishra say Asur and not Chayav Karein? Uh, because it can include, oh, I'm pushing the, it can include uh, Asur. Uh, excuse me, it can, Asur includes uh, Chayav Karet. Was advice for actually, us? actually, we didn't say that. Oh, oh. We oh, I, read did a, not. oh I, read, I read ahead a little. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, so the Gamora is going to be now, but I had, until now, how to answer the question. Um, they, well, they're, they're, they're talking about whether it's a Chetzi Shior. And whether it's uh, it's Putur uh, Deraita or or uh, the Rabbin, uh, the two different positions. Okay, so the basic answer was Mishnah is talking about Chatzis Shiur, and there is no Isur, there is no Chiyuv Karet for Chatzis Shiur, even according to Rabbi Yochanan, who holds that Chatzis Shiur is a Sur Midioraita. There's no um, there's no chiyuv karet. So the way we answered the question was we said, Yom Kippurim asur b'chila v'shtiya v'chulei, when you eat or drink a chatzi shiur. And according to Rabbi Yochanan, it's asur midi right? According to Reish Lakish, it's asur midi So that's how we, that's how we read the Mishnah. So then we, we challenged Reish Lakish uh, or we challenged his shita from somewhere else, from Shavuot. And then we answered that question. So by the time we finish answering the questions on Rish Lakish, <clears throat> that's where we're up to in the Gemara. So at that point, the Gemara now is reading the Mishnah like that, saying, Iporim is asur ba'achila v'shtiya chatsi shiyue. That's basically how the Gemara understands the Mishnah. So, so then we come. Kind of, so yeah, it, go says ahead. Nothing, it says nothing about the other things. Now I realize the the issue of Karet and Asur. Well, Asur covers everything, but the issue of Karet has nothing to do with the other things. It's only talking. Chetzi Yishur doesn't apply to Rechitza or, or the other uh, uh, prohibitions. Right. So. The other things, Ruchitzah and Nidata uh, Sandal, Tashmisha Mita, Sichal, those things, we don't think of them in terms of Chatzi Shiur, right? They're not, they're not things that we measure in the same way. So uh, up until now, the 
Gemara really, without without uh, pointing it out, the Gemara is really only dealing with um, when, uh, when Gemara asks the question that it, the way it says uh, when the Gemara says Anush Kare to right, so it should say Triu Kare. The Gemara is not dealing in any direct way with the, the other Inuyim, e even though, as we as we just pointed out. Maybe they are. There is maybe at that moment the Makshan, the, the Gemara that's asking the question, has some idea that maybe all of them are chiyuv kare. But when, once we conclude the way we conclude, and we say that the achilan shtiya is a chatsi shiur, then I can read the whole Mishnah because it says Yom Kippurim Asur. And then they're all asur, presumably in the same way. Now, what does it mean in the same way? It, that none of them are chiyuv karet. But we'll still be left with the question about the other, the other inuyim, are they asur midioraita or midirabanan? That's still a question by where we get up to in the Gomorrah, uh, to the point where we got to the Gomorrah now. So saying that, so now let's let's continue and let's see how the Gomorrah continues. So the Gomorrah continues, it says, the kol heichad, and I'm gonna, like I said, and last, I'm going to be using the gears of the Bach. Kol v'cho heicha da'anush kare lo tani asur. Every, so, right, a, a rhetorical question. Everywhere where one is uh, uh, punished kare, the Mishnah doesn't say asur. In other words, the Gemara here is challenging the first question. The first question was Asur, right? Anushkaret. Uh, Anushkaret. Why did it say Asur when he's Anushkaret? So then we gave our answer that we just explained now. So, okay, so it's talking about Chatsi Shiur. And either it's Asur Midi right, or it's Asur Banan, but the Lashon of Asur is appropriate. But the underlying assumption of the question was that if the Mishnah uses the term Asur, that's to exclude Anush Karet, right? That's the underlying assumption of the question. Because the Gemara could have answered in the beginning, Asur, Anush Karet, the Gemara could have said, okay, but Anush Karet is a Bichlal Asur. Could have said that Asur is, a, is like a Shem Kolel, it's a general term. And under Asur is are things are also things that are anushkaret. We didn't say that. There was an assumption from the very beginning that that's not true. That if you use the term Asur, that it must it must exclude karet. But now the Gemara is challenging that. And Gemara says, anushkaret lo tani asur." Every time the, somebody is going to be chayav karet, the, the Mishnah isn't going to use the term asur. Bahatanya, afal pi shamru asur the kulan, lo amru anush karet, ela al haochel b'shotev hosem lachav yilvad. Even though they said asur about all of them, they didn't say anush karet except for the one who eats, drinks, and does melacha alone. Okay, so now, before we understand exactly how this supports the question, in other words, the Gemara is bringing this to support the question that we just asked. But first, let's understand this right time. So, this Braita, how do we understand the, the Braita? Afal Pisha Ru Asur Bikulan, even though they said Asur about all of them. Even though who said Asur about what? The Mishnah said that all the things listed in the Mishnah are Asur. 
Excellent. So we understand from this first line of the Brita, this Brita is like a nispach, right? It's like an addendum to our Mishnah, which is common, right? It's you know, a lot of Brita are, are directly going on Mishnayot. And that's what's happening here. So it's like we learn the Mishnah, and then uh, after we learn that first line of the Mishnah, then it's as if we have like a comment, a comment or a commentary from the Brita that says, even though they said in the Mishnah, Asur, about all of them, in other words, what's all of them? All the pro prohibitions enumerated in the Mishnah. All of the prohibitions that are enumerated in the Mishnah. Lo amru anush karet, but they didn't say that one is punished by karet, except for one who eats, drinks, or does melacha alone. In other words, only those three things are anush karet. Okay. So what do we see from this brighta in that support question? So our question was, to rephrase it from the Gemara, how can it be, why, why would you think that the fact that the Mishnah uses the term Asur automatically excludes Anush Karet? What do I see in the Brita that seems to contradict that? How do I intend the Brita to tell me that this supports the question? It's coming back and, and um, specifying that for the Achila um, Mishtia, that there is uh, Anush Karat, Karat, Karat. Okay, so, uh, so yes, so let's let's draw that out a little bit more. Afa Pishamru Asur, so what's our problem? We thought that Asur excludes Anush Karet. But here, the Braita tells me all of them, it's saying all of these things that are listed in the Mishnah are Asur, but <clears throat> some of them are Anush Karet. By the way, uh, well, okay, let's just leave it at that. There's a, there's a side question here, but we'll leave it. So, Meaning what? So meaning the Brita understands that when the Mishnah said Asur, it didn't exclude Chiyuvei Karet. Because actually, Achidah and Osem are in fact Chiyuvei Karet. Now, I want you to remember that we spent the last, what, two or three weeks proving that our Mishnah was Dafka not talking about Karet at all. That was the whole point of understanding the Mishnah as being about Chatzit Shiur. And now it turns out there's a Brayta that says, no, actually, the Mishnah is also talking about Chiyuve Karet. It's also talking about Anush Karet. It's just the Mishnah can list things that are all asur in, the, in one list. And that doesn't mean that some of them are not also anush karet. So it goes back to our original, to, to not the original, it goes back to the beginning of this part of the sukya, where we have reason to believe that if the Mishnah uses the term asur, it can be a shem kolel, it can be a general that includes anything that's asur under any kind of category of isur, including isur diraita, including isur karet. That's what we see from the Brayta. So now let's go back and read it again. V'cho heicha anush karet lo tani asur, right? Anytime, the, anytime that somebody is, or we have a case of somebody who is going to be punished, the Mishnah will not de describe that person or that act as being Asur. But here, I see the Brayta, that's how the Brayta understands our Mishnah. The Brayta here says, Afal Pisham Ru Asur, the Kulan, 
לא אמרו לנו שקרי, אלא על האוכל ושוטה ועושה מלאכה בלבד. זאת אומרת, that it goes back to the way, to our original, 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 before we ask the question in the Gemara, in the beginning of the Sugya, goes back to, uh, actually, in a sense, a simpler understanding of the Mishnah. It's just that we challenge, we, we challenge that because we thought that the term Asur can't apply or would not be used about Anush Karet. But now we're saying, no, but it could be, because here I have a right to the says it. So Gemara answers in a, in answers. So the first answer is Kachikamar. So I, I think we've pointed out. Kachikamar literally means uh, thus it, it is said. And it, it, Kachikamar always is used in the Gemara to introduce a um, uh, a new way of reading a Mishnah or a Brayta. Sometimes it's actually changing the Girsa. And here it's not necessarily changing the Girsa, but it's giving us a more uh, extensive interpretation of the Brayta. So it's saying, Hachikama, this is how you should understand the Brayta. And now it's, it's going to draw a in the words of the Brayta, but it's going to add in a lot of other words by way of explanation. So, Hachikama, Kishamru Asur, when they said in the Mishnah, Asur, Lo Amru Ela Bikechatsi Shiur. They only said Asur regarding a Chatsi Shiur. About Kishiur Anush Karet. So, before we go on, so we understand that the Gemara now is going to take the conclusion that we that it came to before in the first part of the Sugya, and it's going to say that's also actually assumed by the Brayta. Even though the Brayta doesn't mention Chatzi Shiur, but this is how I'm going to understand the Brayta. Ava pishamru asur, no amru elodike Chatzi Shiur, so it's now this part, that's entirely not in the Brayta. But the Gemara is saying you have to assume that that's what the Brayta is assuming. They only said Asur regarding Chatsi Shiur. Aval Kishiur Anush Karet. Pisha, right? So all of that's not in the Brayta. Vafa Pisha Anush Karet. And, and so if somebody does, does eat or drink a shiur, they will be anush karet. And even though they're anush karet, uh, the, uh, the onush of karet is only going to apply to people who eat, drink, or do malacha. So it's taking these words and it's it's adding a lot, right? Afa pishamru asur bekulan, lo amru el bekachatzi shiur, daval kashiur anush karet. The afa pishanush karet, lo amru anush karet or ein anush karet ela ocha b'shot of osem lacha. So the Gemara is reworking the Brayta to fit in with our prior conclusion. So that's one answer. Of course, it's strained, right? It's a strained answer because it adds in a lot of words and concepts that are not in the mission itself. When we, when the Gemara in the first part of the sugya introduces the idea of chatzi shiur, we could also say, well, the, the mission doesn't say anything about chatzi shiur. Why, why, why were we more willing to accept the notion of chatzi shiur back then? Why, why was that an appealing way of understanding the Mishnah? Even though, it does, even though the mission doesn't say chatzi shiur, why should that be a reasonable way of understanding the Mishnah? Uh, because Hetzi Shior is a category that applies across many different halachot. I, I understand why you're saying that. 
and that's true. Um, but I, I might still ask my question, but the Mishnah here doesn't say anything about Chatzishiyon. Why doesn't the Gemara in the first part, in the first sugya, simply raise that as a question? Uh, and, you know, Ikar the main thing that you want to tell me about how to understand the Mishnah doesn't actually appear in the Mishnah. So it goes back to what was the original question? Why does it say a sewer instead of a turret? Right. So our basic answer is, so the, it was, we answer by saying chatzishiur because we need to find, we need to, a way of understanding the Mishnah where these things are asur, but are not, are not chayav of kareis. So the Gemara isn't bothered, the Gemara earlier isn't bothered by the fact that chatzishiur doesn't appear in forash, doesn't appear here explicitly in the in the Mishnah, because Asur appears in the Mishnah, and our assumption is that Asur has to be something that can be both Asur or even Miyoraita, and yet not Chayav Kare. So Chatzishior answers that question, but here it's a little bit different because Afapish here here we're challenging the very notion that Asur can't include Anush Karet. And the Pashtus of the, of the Braita is that it can. The simple way of understanding the Braita is that if you say Asur, that could also include Anush Karet. So that's why I say this answer is, in a sense, more strained. When we introduce Chatzi Shior in the Braita, it's more strained because I could read this Braita without saying Chatzishior, and I could go back and apply it to our Mishnah now, also without applying Chatzishior. But nonetheless, that's the Gemara's first answer. Gemara says, we're going to hold on to our conclusion that the Mishnah is talking about Chatzishior, and I'm going to learn the Braita along the same lines. I'm going to learn the Braita as if the Braita is also assuming that the Isra of the Mishnah is Chatsi Shiur. So, Afa Pisha Amru Asur Bekulan, Lo Amru El Bekachatsi Shiur, Abab Keshiur Anush Karet, Ve so that's the first answer. The Gemara gives a second answer. One may say that the Gemara gives a second answer, in fact, because it, it also detects a weakness in the first answer. So it wants to give a second answer. Uh, so... Before we go to the second answer, so now I'll tell you what the side question is that I had in mind. The side question is, uh, when the brightest says, well, actually, in that Mishnah, it doesn't talk about Asiyat Melacha at all. But I could understand. So, so why is why does it get introduced here? So it gets into even, but we we know that uh, just a little bit later in the in the Mishnah, it will talk about Asiyat Melacha, and it will and we will understand that to be Anush Kare. So the Brita, as I said here, it comes like a kind of a commentary to the Mishnah. So it's including something that we also know to be Anush Kare even though it doesn't appear in the, in the Mishnah so far. But it does appear in the Mishnah a little bit further on. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay. The e bait Ema, right? If you want, I will say. I, I'll give you an alternative explanation. Ki katani asur asha'ara. When the Mishnah says asur, it's on the, it's on the rest. It's on the other. So what does that mean? 
what's the other, what's the rest? The other is uh, are the things that don't that, that aren't anusha karet. And and right. So what are those things? There, I mean, that's correct. What are those things? Um, you know, shimu shmita, um, um, okay. sandalin, um, the ode, the ode. Okay, <laughs> very good. Right. So rechitza. No, 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 is a very convenient phrase. I have to say. <laughs> Right. Well, it's, it's also it's also numerically accurate because there were two more. So, um, right. So it's rechitza, sticha, nilata, sandal, tashmish, shemita. So the Gemara says, if you want, I'll say when the when the Mishnah and subsequently the Brita that's explaining the Mishnah uses the term asur, it's ashara. It's on the other things that are not. Achilashtia and Asiyat Malacha. It's on the other things. Those things are Asur. And then the way I would read the Mishnah is that, um, that and, and then I understand the Brita to, uh, I understand the Brita to now elucidate that fact. In other words, I can go back to understanding the Brita in a simpler way. Because what does the Brita say? So now I understand. So if I understand that when the Mishnah says, Yom Kippurim Asur B'Achilash Diya Ruchita, etc., that it's really the asur is really mainly referring to rechitza and onwards. So now I understand that's what the bright is coming to clarify. So it said the bright is saying yes, it uses the term asur for all of them, but really anush karet applies to the ochel Bishute as well as asiyat malacha. So that. That's an easier reading, both of the Mishnah and of the Brita. Once I read the Mishnah and the Brita like that, I don't need to talk about Chatzishi at all. Right? In other words, now I've answered the question. Our question was, what makes you think? Um, again, I think I keep rephrasing the question, but it's like, what makes you think that we can't include Anushkare? So now we'll say it doesn't explicitly include Anushka, right? And really, when the Mishnah uses the term Asur, it uses it because most of the things in the list are Asur and not Anushka, right? But, and then I have the supplemental Brita to tell me, but actually Achila and Shtia are Anushka, right? So why didn't the Mishnah point that out? Because remember... Mishnah Yod made to, uh, in a kind of mnemonic way, they're made to, to be easy to remember. Most of the list falls easily under the category of Asur. Achila and Shtia are also Asur, but you have to remember that it's not just that they're Asur, they're really also Anushkaret. But I'm going to categorize them under Asur because mo most of the list is just Asur. Ki katani asur ashara. The tanu rab of Rav Yosef b'shar sifre devei rav. And now, so now we're going to bring a uh, a brayta. Which I th I'm thinking about this. I should have put this in, in brayta font. Just a second. I know why I didn't do it to begin with, but I think it should be. In other words, because what they're quoting is a bright time. Rabbah and Rav Yosef learned in the other, literally in the other books of the Beit HaMidrash of Rav. Uh, 
So what did they learn? Minayan the Yom HaKippurim Shasur Berchitsa Besicha Venirata Sandal Tashim Shamita Talmud Lomar Shabbatam Shvut. So from where do I learn that Yom HaKippurim is Asur in these other four things? Because the Torah says Shabbatam, and Shabbatam means Shvut. So what does that mean? <laughs> what I learned from that. What are the, what is what is this bright coming to tell me? What does it have to do with you know with with the answer to understanding the, the Mishnah? So where does it say Shabbaton? Um, so the Shabbaton here is is referred for this. We'll look at Rashi. So Shabbaton appears a number of times in the Torah. So we have to remember, we have to figure out which Shabbaton is this referring to. So Rashi explains as follows. Let's look. If you want, I'll say, first, this is Rashi's understanding, Yibayadema. Yibayadema ki katani matnitin asur asha'ara. Right? So that's that's how. Rashi is learning this answer. When the Mishnah says, it's on the other. Right? In other words, it's saying, it, it's using the term Asur on these other things that are Asur and that are, are not accompanied with uh, Karet. Asur, as a term, was used may, really to refer to them. And then you'll ask, so what about Achila B'Shtiyah? So I understand that, again, I'm adding this in, that for, for purposes of simplification, to make it easier to remember, I just say Asur in all of them, but as the, I have a bright to the supplement to, to remind me that Achila and Shtiyah and Asiyat Malach are actually Anush Kare. Okay. Ditan Rabbah Rabbi Yosef B'Shah Sifre Dirav. Uh, Shar Sifre, the other Sifre, the other books, Rashi explains the love to Torah Kohanim. The, the other books that were not Torah Kohanim, Sefer Vayidaber Ve'ela Hadvarim. So, what's Torah Kohanim? Aikra. Very good. So, Torah Kohanim is one of the terms of Hazal used for Vayikra, for Sefer Vayikra. And uh, Devei Rav compiled the Midrashe uh, Halacha on Sefer Vayikra. And that was called the Sifra. And we, we have that. It's called the Sifra. It's, and it's also called the Torah Kohanim. Just to bear in mind, when you see the term Torah Kohanim, in most instances that you see it now, it's actually going to be referring to the medrash that we call the medrash sifra, the halachic medrash on Sefer Vayikra. But here, Torah Kahanin, as Michael Werner points out, refers to Sefer Vayikra, right? So the other books, the love to Torah Kahanin, that are not Torah Kahanin, that are not Vayikra, or not the medrash on Vayikra, uh, and what are those? What are the other books uh, that we have these Midrashim from Beirav on? We have them on Vayda Ber, which refers to Sefer Bamidbar, uh, which is it's the first word of Sefer ba, uh, Bamidbar. The Eilah Hadvarim are the first words of Dvarim. Okay, so the Midrash Halacha on Bamid, the, 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 or the, 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 the <laughs> the Midrash Halacha on Bamidbar and Dvarim, we call it the Sifre, which is really just Sfarim. It just means books. And here we see, like, you know, the Makor for this idea that Rabbah and Rabbi Yosef learn in the Sifre. And what did they learn? Where do I learn that these things are Asur and Yom Kippur? Because 
Torah says, Shabbaton, Shvut. So how does that tell me these four things from the word Shabbaton? And which context of Shabbaton are we, am I learning it from? So Rashi explains as follows, Shabbaton, it's the Shabbaton that's written in regard to Inui. Okay, so this Shabbaton um, is the Shabbaton of Inui, which is this, the Pasuk that Rashi quotes here. So that Pasuk is Parshat Amor. I have it down here in my footnote. Shabbat Shabbaton Hilachem, or Hu Vachem. Right, so this is in the in Parshat Moadim in Parshat Amor, and and in the context of, of Shabbaton, it's telling me Inui Nefesh, right? Shabbat Shabbat Shabbaton Ulachem. So if I was just doing a straight parshanut on the pasuk, I could understand that initem is a reflection of the Shabbaton aspect or the Shabbat Shabbaton aspect. But in other words, there's something about Shabbat Shabbaton that leads the Torah to say the initem, that you should afflict yourselves. So, the fact that the the Torah says Shabbat Shabbaton, and I understand that has to do with Inui. So, what? It, so now, this gives me some insight now to understanding Udrasha, right? How from where do I know Yom Kippur is Asur in these four things? Because the Torah says Shabbaton, Shmut. So I'm going to learn out from Shabbaton these Inuyim. And Shvut, what is Shvut? What's the basic? If, if what's the basic idea of Shvut? What's the root of Shvut? Shin Okay, and what does that mean? What's the, uh, the root? It means cessation, abstention. Perfect. Very perfect. Cessation. Right? So Shabbaton, it's telling me I have to cease from something. So the fact that the Torah adds on the word Shabbaton seems to indicate that I have to cease from more than I might do on a Shabbat. Right? So Shabbat is a surbim lacha. Shabbat Shabbaton must mean that it's the sort of anything more than that. And then the Torah says, the initem. So I understand that the, the what's being added on is the inu, are, are inuyim. Now, how do I know it's those four things specifically? We'll leave that to the side. Because the Torah, you know, nobody's saying that Shabbaton means Rechitza, Sichan, Mirata, Sandal, and Tashmish, Mitah. It's not saying cessation from those four specific things, but nonetheless, those are things that are to to cease from doing those things on Kippur is a uh, in, uh, would be considered inuyim, and we'll learn a little bit more later on about why those four specific things. Okay, that's the basic makor. Let's go back. Rashi is explaining this with an on a uh, on a slightly deeper level. So he's saying, Shabbaton, Talmud Lamar Shabbaton, V'gab Inui K'tiv. That's the Shabbaton that's written by Inui. V'chi hechi de Shabbaton amor b'Shabbat, asmuchu bei Rabbanan shamalachot shelo hayu b'mishkan, v'ina malacha gmura. And just like the Rabbanan um, took the term Shabbaton in context of Shabbat, itself as a basis for 
including uh, and they they made an asmachta asmachu be rabbanan. The rabbanan leaned on the term shabbaton to include other malachot that were not in the mishkan and therefore are not malacha gemura. They're not really absolute malachot legabe shabbat, but they used the term shabbaton as a basis for. There, uh, as a basis for instituting um, these other malachot that are not ex that are not malachot gemurot, so in the same way, Hainami Shabbaton de Gabei Nui Dichtiv Shabbaton Hudachem Vinitem. So here also, when the Chachamim saw Shabbaton vis-a-vis -vis Yom Kippurim. They also used the Shabbaton, the Hosif al Inui, Achila Ushtiyakaati. They used it to add on to the Inuyim of eating and drinking. That it comes, Kaati, it comes to add on to the Inui of Achila Ushtiyak. Okay, so to put it in my own words, and I'll show you the, so I. Actually, I had to, um, it's interesting. I didn't find anybody right on the daf who, who made this connection. But Rashi's, Rashi's clearly saying there's precedent for using the term Shabbaton in Hilchot Shabbat to add, as an asmachta to add on melachot that are not of the 39 melachot that were in the Mishkan. And in the same way, I'm going to use Shabbaton in the context of Yom Kippurim to add on Inuyim that are not explicitly or not considered to be Inuyim Midioraita per se. So what's the case? Where do I see that Shabbaton is used by Chachamim to include Malachot that were not in the Mishkan? So for this, we're going to digress a little bit, and we're going to look at the sugya Sechet Shabbat on Daf Kuf Yud Dalad Amud Bet. So you might, if you've learned Hilchot Yom Kippurim in the Shulchan Aruch, you may have learned. Uh, this, um, or in some other collection of halachot, there's an idea min hadin on Yom Kippur. When Yom Kippur is on chol, that is doesn't fall out on Shabbat, that you're allowed to start uh, chopping up vegetables toward the end of Yom Kippur. The basis for that is this sugya here, and we'll see how it fits into what we're discussing. Amar Rabbi Zeir, Amar Rav Huna, Amrila, Amar Rabbi Abba, Amar Rav Huna. So either Rabbi Zeir or Rabbi Abba said in the name of Rav Huna, Yom Kippurim Shechal Yod B'Shabbat, Asur B'Knivat Yerek. When Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbat, you're not allowed to chop up or to trim vegetables. Okay, so what does that imply? What does that imply about when Yom Kippur falls out when it's not Shabbat? But you can do it. Yeah, you can. Do it. Right. So it implies. So we understand from this, from this halacha two things: that if Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbat, you're not allowed to do knivat yerek. But by implication, Yom Kippur doesn't fall on Shabbat. You are allowed to do Kinnibat Yerek. Amar of Mana, Tana Bachir learns Tanya Nami Hachi. Rav Mana says we learn it also in a Brayta. What's the Brayta? Minayin liyom Kippurim shechal yod b'Shabbat shesur b'Kinnibat Yerek. Where do where do I learn from? That when Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbat, that you're not allowed to cut up vegetables. Talmud Lomar Shabbaton Shvut. I learned it out from Shabbaton Shvut. 
So what Shabbaton am I learning it out from? Uh, I'm learning it out from here. Um, this is the this is the ref that, that the Masorah uh, Shas uses, and this is what everybody seems to be the Shabbaton that's referring to. So what's this Shabbaton? Who was your Diber Hashem? Shabbaton Shabbat Kodesh Hashem Achar. It was your to the flu elu. It was your to vashlu b'shelu. That kol ha'odef anichu lachem and ishmer at haboker. Right. So, so what's the what's the context here? It's referring to the man. It's referring to the man, and who's speaking? Uh, Moshe speaking to the to the Am. Very good. This is uh, this is uh, uh, one of my uh, sources for Purim Torah. Where do we know that you're supposed to bake tofu from the Torah? It says etasher tofu a fool. Anyway, <laughs> all right. My poor jokes aside. So here, Shabbaton is clearly referring to Shabbat, right? This is the only context here. Shabbat has nothing to do with Yom Kippurim. And So here, the Torah explicitly forbids uh, baking and cooking on Shabbat by implication, because you have to do those things uh, before Shabbat. So what is this, what the what is this bright to trying to learn out from here? For what? In other words, what is the meaning? What, what do I need the Torah to tell me Shabbaton? For what purpose is it telling me Shabbaton? If you, if you want to say <clears throat> that the chidush here is that you're not allowed to do melacha on Shabbat, v'haktiv lo ta'asekel melacha. I have another pasuk for that. I have a pasuk elsewhere that says lo ta'asekel melacha on Shabbat. El alav aknivat yerek shmamina. Rather, it must come to tell me that you're not allowed to chop up vegetables on Shabbat. Shmamina. That's what we learned. And again, knivat Yerek, it's not that it's explicit in the word Shabbaton, it's the, the drasha, Shabbaton, Shvut. Shabbaton is coming to tell me to cease from doing something that I haven't already been told to cease from doing. So I was already told not to do malacha. So now I must be telling me to do something that's quasi halacha, quasi malacha. It's not really a malacha gemura, <clears throat> but nonetheless, the Torah doesn't want me to do it. So that's the Shvut. Shabbaton comes to tell me Shvut. Shvut also, by the way, and if you've learned uh, Masechet Beitza, you'll also know, and from other contexts as well, Shvut was a, a term, the term that Chazal used to refer to Isurei de Rabbanan for Shabbat and Yom Tov. Those are called Shvut. Those are Isur Shvut. But the idea of shvut, they're, they're being somech on the pasuk, on the word shabbaton. Okay. So, in terms of assigning Kniva Yerek in particular, that was what, that's under the authority of the Rabbanan. The Rabbanan had authority to make these kinds of specific uh, interpretations. Amar Rabbi Chia Barab, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. So after all that, I have this ma'amar in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, <coughs> who says, actually, when Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbat, you're about to chop up vegetables. Meitive. So then the Gemara asks the Kasha. Minayin li Yom Kippur in Shechal Yopi Shabbat Shesur B'Knivat Yarek, Samud Omar Shabbaton Shvut. Right? So the Meitive is going to be the brighter that I just quoted. I just quoted this brighter. The writer says, Talmud Omar, 
right? That where do I know that you're not allowed to chop up vegetables? Because the Torah says Shabbaton. The Mai Ilema the Macha the Haksiv lo Tasek Kol Macha Ela so this is a caution, Rabbi Yochanan, because Rabbi Yochanan says that Yom Kippurim Shachal Yopi Shabbat, you're not allowed to chop up vegetables. Lo, lo olam l'mlacha. So he answers by saying, or we answer for him by saying, no, it's really always talking about l'mlacha, v'avur amei ba'ase v'lo tase. Really, it is that Shabbat, the Shabbaton there is in fact talking about l'mlacha gemura. So why does it say Shabbaton? I already know Lota Sekomalacha from another Pasuk. It's so that if you do Malacha on Shabbat, you're over both on the Lota Se of Lota Semalacha and on the Ase of Shabbaton, which is Shvut or Shvot, right? That you should start. That's how Rabbi Yochanan will answer. So now I'll learn like Rabbi Yochanan, Yom Kippurim, Shachal Yot B'Shabbat. Uh, I'll bring a brighter that holds like uh, Rabbi Yochanan. So Yom Kippurim, Shachal Yot B'Shabbat, Mutar B'Kni I actually have a brighter that says Mufurash, so like Rabbi Yochanan. You're allowed to chop up vegetables on Yom Kippur that falls out on Shabbat. And mifatzin ba'gozin, you can also crack nuts. And mifachusin ba'rimonim, you can break up uh, the uh, uh, pomegranates. Min ha'mincha ulamala, from the time of mincha and onwards. Mibnei agmat nefesh, right? Because of like the distress that the soul is in, you know, with, from not eating, uh, we allow you, because I'll allow you to start preparing food. That you're going to eat after the fast. Duvei Rav Yehuda mekanvei krava. Duvei Rabba Gardi Kaari. Right. So these different people, they in fact they're bringing testimony that uh, one of them would uh, cut up um, uh, kruf cabbage, and one of them would uh, chop up. Uh, Kari, which is uh, dilat, um squash. Kevan dechazid dehave kam becharfi amalehu ata igrita mimara shmeid Rabbi Yochanan deasir. So, but it ends off by saying, um, when when they saw or when when it was seen that they were becharfi uh, that people were cutting up their vegetables early, like before Zman Mincha, then he said to them, uh, a, 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 an epistle, a letter came from the West, from Eretz Yisrael, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, who said it's Asur. Okay, so the Halacha, technically, uh, in the Shulchan Aruch, most posts can hold that minadin, you're allowed to do this, but it's better not to. But okay, we'll leave that aside. What we get out of it is we we get in this kind of a funny in this kind of a funny way that Shabbaton, the Shabbaton that is mentioned by Parshat Haman, is there to tell me that. You're not allowed to chop up vegetable on Yom Kippur that falls out on Shabbat. I'll just show you Rashi here. On uh, we're not going to go through all of the Rashi's. And this is part of a longer discussion in the Gemara about Shvut. So Rashi says, Asibat Yerek. So Yom Kippurim that falls out on Shabbat, you know, I like to chop up vegetables. And Rashi says, So why does it bring, Rashi's answering the question, why does the halacha come down like this when Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbat? Why does it say 
on Shabbat, you're not allowed to do Kamibad. What's so special about Yom Kippurim falling out? So he says, Lo mi bai I don't need, I, you don't need to tell me about a general, like Shabbat in general, that's a sur mishum shvut, de katarach mi Shabbat lecho, because why? If you're doing it late in the day, then you're doing a tircha from shachol. I'm adding late in the day. It also depends what you're doing. So like if it's dalat, then bichal, if you're doing that on Shabbat, it's going to be for chol, because you're not going to eat raw dalat. You won't eat raw squash on Shabbat. Right? So it should be a sur. But it means even today on Yom Kippur, where there's inui, so even today, when there's an extra layer of inui, because on other Yom, other Yom Kippurims, that is, doesn't on other Yom Kippurims that don't fall out on Shabbat, other types of shvut are asur, but this would be mutar, as we understood from the language of the halacha, like Michael uh, Schwartz said to begin with, but now that it falls out on Shabbat, then the chachamim were also, uh, were also osir, they didn't permit it. In other words, it's asur that Yom Kippurim Shechal Liyot Asur B'Kinivad Yerek, Rashi says, explain, it's actually a sore in any Shabbat. The chidush here is it's a sore even when Yom Kippurim falls out on Shabbat, because when Yom Kippurim doesn't fall out on Shabbat, it's it's mutar. Okay, so that's how Rashi resents. So Amar Manatana. So where do I learn it from? Talmud Lomar by Shabbat Breshit Shabbaton Shabbat Shabbat Shabbaton Mashma Shvut Ulamai. So. So Shabbaton is Shvut for what purpose? Basic Kmiva Sarlan Kra. Which particular type of chopping up of vegetables is the Torah forbidding us with Shabbaton Shvut? So if you say Malacha, what does it mean if you say Gom Nechubar? If you're talking about vegetables that haven't been harvested yet, they're still attached to the ground. Then I don't need a pasuk for that. Haktiv lo That's for sure. Everybody knows that chopping off a hole from the ground. That's for sure. An isur duraita. That's his, that's isur melacha. All right. That's under kotzer. Right. You're not allowed to harvest things on Shabbat. Bahatu lamali. So why do I need Shabbaton? What what further do I need it for? What do I need Shabbat for? Shabbaton for? So it must be to tell me you're not allowed to chop a vegetable in general, even when it's in harvest. Because it's not something that's uh, something which is not explicitly a malacha, like harvesting. Then that's referred to by this word ton that tells me shvut or shvot. The kevan de midi writes a sur bechol shabbatot hashana. Since it's always from the Torah for all the shabbatot of the year, hacha lo sharin and leni shum akbat nefesh the mitre isur de writes. So just to be clear, Rashi, Rashi's understanding that Shabbaton Shvut is not just an asmachta, it's a real isur diorita. It's a ribui from the Torah that on Shabbat, you're not allowed to chop vegetables that you're not going to use on Shabbat, can't use on Shabbat. Because of this, term Shabbaton. And so you might have thought that when Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbat, 
that you would be allowed to do this kind of chopping of of Yom, uh, of uh, Yerek. Why? What's different about Yom Kippur than Shabbat that you we would allow you to chop up a vegetable on Yom Kippur, even though you can't eat it on Yom Kippur? You're hungry. You haven't eaten all day, so you want to eat right away after you don't want to wait to prepare the food. Okay, so the knowledge that we use is Mishum Agmat Nefesh. In other words, that there's a heter on Yom Kippur because you're hungry. It's like to give you, uh, you know, some relief from your distressed soul that you haven't eaten, that we allow you to chop up a vegetable. So we might say that's true even when Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbat. So, in other words, so Rashi said this this way that. Regular Shabbat, you shouldn't be allowed to do it because you're not allowed to prepare from Shabbat to Motzei Shabbat. But on a regular Yom Kippur, we do, there is a heter, Mishum Agmat Nefesh. We say you can start to prepare your meal by chopping up a vegetable, Mina Minchu Lumala, on Yom Kippur, so that you can start eating right after or shortly after the fast. So the chidush here is that when Yom Kippur falls out on Shabbat, hacha lo sharin le mishum agmat nefesh, the mutti writes it. Here, we, we don't know, just because of agmat nefesh, push away an isur di right of, sh- of Shabbaton. Umar Yom Kippurim shari le agmat nefesh, but other Yom Kippurs don't fall on Shabbat. It's permitted because of agmat nefesh. Even though by Yom Kippur, it also says Shabbaton, as we say, you know, it's this Shabbaton that we're talking about here, this is the Shabbaton that's mentioned in regard to Shabbat and the man. So then you'll say, if that is Oser Knivat Yere, so when I see Shabbaton by Yom Kippurim, Shabbat Shabbaton hu lachem bi'init. It should also be for Knivat Yerek. So there I say no. Lavim lacha, right? Afo gab dirtiv nami Shabbaton shvu. Lavim lacha hu. It's not about a malacha. El mikol davar ha ma'akev midlihita not. In that context, Shabbaton there isn't to cease from doing malacha. We understand from its context, it's to cease from doing things that will cause you an, an inui or anything that would hold you back from doing an inui. Because samuch, right, it's right next to the command of initem that you need to afflict yourselves. And Rashi says, Rashi is explaining our sugi here in the Sechad Yoma. He's saying, he's, he's just saying essentially what we're learning now in the Sechad Yoma. That Shabbaton in Yoma is Shvut for these sha, the Shar Inuyim, for the other Inuyim. So we'll go back and we'll read Rashi one more time. Shabbaton, right? So what, was, what were we saying? Let's go back. Uh, what was our? What is the question? Let's go back to the beginning of this part of the sugya. What's the question we're trying to answer? What's the question for the sugya? The whole this whole part of the sugya. It's, it's the same question. Is it why is it says the sword instead of correct? But here, here. Um, it's not exactly the same question. What was the question? It's a. But, um, well, it, it is every place that it's uh, says the sword means no, no. It says the same correct. No. Um, any place that's no, it doesn't make sense. I'm a bit confused. Sorry. You're a little bit confused. Michael Werner, do you 
you walked in a little bit late, but you you know the, this this we did, went over this. What's the question? I mean, in fact, um, is the word of and do do we do we indeed? Um, abstain from um and do, do we indeed not use the term asur for anushkarat fine right so this as we said this question challenges our original question challenges the basis of our original question our original question was why does the mission say asur it should say anushkarat Right, and then we give our answer. It's chatzishiur, and here we say, wait a minute, who's to say that asur doesn't also mean anushkaret? And in fact, I have a brighter that says, and so I understand from the brighter, which is apparently explaining our Mishnah, that asur. Can it, in my list of things that are asur are also things that are anushkaret. So asur doesn't exclude things that are anushkaret. So the first answer we gave is, actually, this brighta goes along in the line that we just finished learning in the previous part of the sugya, and we have to add in that in that this concept of chatzishiyur. And the way I understand the Brahita is, even though they said Asur Bikulan, they only said Asur regarding Chatsi Shiur. But a Chatsi, but a Shiur Shalei, like a Shiur in Ulamala, that's Anushkaret. And, anush, and even though one is Anushkaret, it's not for that whole list, it's only for the Achidashtiya and also Asiyat Malacha. So that was the first answer. The second answer is ibai dema ki katani asur ara. If you want, I'll say answer this question. Who's to say that asur doesn't include karet? I'll say yeah, asur doesn't include karet, and really asur is used in our Mishnah only to refer to the other inuyim, but not achilan shdiya. That's the second answer. And then I bring this bright of etc. Where do I know that you're that that you're not supposed to do do these other inuyim? I learned it from the Basuk of Shabbaton, and that tells me Shvot, that you should re, restrain yourselves, you should stop from doing doing things. So Rashi understands what does it mean, Shabbaton. That Chazal saw Shabbaton as a way of adding on to Inuyim that were not, not Midiurata, like Achilah Vishtia. They're implied by the word Shabbaton. In the same way that we saw that Shabbaton in the context of Shabbat came to include Malachot that were not, not Malachot Gumrot, like Kenivat Yerek. In, when I see Shabbaton in the context of Inu Nefesh, so it comes to include other Inu Yin that are not that are not specifically eating and drinking. Okay. Okay. I think that's I think that's a good place up. Uh, I'll do what I did last time. We'll just read a bit further and we'll pick up next time. So we're not finished with Chatsi Shiur. <laughs> we're not yet Chatsi Shiur. What we've done until now is really, and this goes back to something I told you a long, long, long time ago. The first order of business for the Gemara is just understand the words of the Mishnah. That's really the first thing that the Gemara wants to know about any Mishnah. If the Gemara 
already has all the words of the Mishnah, it, it will skip over that. It, it, it won't ask any questions. And it'll go something else. But the first thing is the words of the Mishnah. So everything that we've done until now is really just to understand the word Asur in, our, in the context of our Mishnah. Right? If you go and you, and you review this, and as we discussed tonight, everything we've done until now is just understand Asur. Along the way, we introduced this concept of Chatsi Shiur as a way of understanding the word Asur in our Mishnah. And now I've been a couple of other concepts. Um, but now at this point, the Gemara, as the Gemara continues, the Gemara will continue from here, Gufa. Chatsi Shiyur Rab Yochanan Amar Asur Mina Torah Vesh Lakisha Mar Mutar Mina Torah. So Gufa means the body of the thing, or the main thing, or not necessarily the main thing, but Gufa means it means a body. And it, but Gufa, the way the Gemara uses the term Gufa, Gufa is used to introduce a discussion that we have already raised earlier, but now we're going to go into it on its own in depth. So we already had the machlok. No, so so, 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 so Gufa would be like substance. We're going to the substance of the matter. You could say that. Uh, it's, it's not... Uh, it's not an unreasonable way of saying it. Uh, there's there's another way of saying it, which has escaped me, or maybe I'm just so used to using it in the Gomorrah context. But it's to take, yeah, to take, I'll, I'll use your term in this context, right? To take the substance of that particular quote that we, we brought before for other reasons. Now I'm going to examine it on its own in greater depth. So when I learned about Chatsi Shiur before, um, I never discussed what the basis of the Machloket was between Reish Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan. I basically just quoted. I said, Rabbi Yochanan says, Chatsi Shiur is Asur Torah, it says it's, a, it's Mutar Minatora. But I don't know why they argue. What's the basis for their argument? So the now is going to start to go into it. It's going to say chatzit gufa, right? So to the heart of the matter, to the substance of the matter. And now it's going to tell us more. It's why is it why is chatzishur asur minatora? Because it's uh, it's raui, it's raui, it's fit to join up with more, right? To be to be mitzareif, uh, right? You can add to more. So if you have a candy bar in front of you that's a shiur, you eat half the candy bar. It's it's fit. To continue eating the candy bar, it's I can I can add it on to the rest of the candy bar. So isura ka'achil. So even though you haven't eaten a, sh a shiur, but if you keep eating, you've contributed to eating a shiur. So that's why Rabbi Yochanan says that chazi shiur is asur mina Torah. The Torah forbids you from eating a chatzis shiur because how do you ever get to a shiur? You have to start with a chatzis shiur. Right? You're not going to go gulp down down in one gulp. You're going to eat it part by part. So since we're eating right now can be part of a shiur, the Torah forbids it. He says, no, Torah actually permits it, because what does the Torah forbid 
on Yom Kippur, it forbids chila, it forbids eating. And as discussed a few times, achila has halachic definition, and part of the halachic definition includes shiur. And if you're eating chatzi shiur, then you haven't done something that the Torah forbade. Right? Mutami na Torah, achila marachmana. Torah says, you're not allowed to eat. Veleka. And you don't have eating. You don't have achila. So that sets up their machloka. And I think that's a good place to stop. Everybody's invited to read on. It gets into some other interesting things. Um, and yeah, that's it. Any last questions, comments? No. And as usual, it looks like we're all ready to fall asleep. But thank you for, uh, I mean, I know I am. I had, a, I told Michael Schwartz, I had a bit of a hard night last night. Take care. Good night, thank you. Bye, Bye, bye.